Hello and welcome, my ridiculously, absurdly shiny pennies. How you doing today? It's SJB, and today we're talking about Geraldo and all of his mightiness. I've realized that Geraldo's by far the best hero in the game, and he's also by far the most complicated hero in the game. So what I wanted to do for you guys, even though this is a little overdue, I wanted to break down Geraldo uh, into every single one of his shop items. I'm going to talk about them, explain them, and show you how they work. Uh, and hopefully make you a better BTD6 player by understanding Geraldo and his powers all together. He's got a lot of weird stuff, and some stuff might even seem a little bit broken, might even be broken. But as of right now, as of June 17th, 2022, this is how Geraldo works, so let's talk about it. But, before we get there, if you guys want to do two things for me. First of all, pay attention to this cool-looking picture right here. We're going to talk about the new BTD6 update coming very, very soon. And second, if you guys want to press the like button for me, that would be absolutely delicious. Please do that. That would just make me feel so good. And if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, get going here because we got a lot of new con content coming for you guys very, very soon. So, I just kind of want to touch on this really, really quickly. This is called the Contested Territory Event. If you guys are not used to this, or you don't understand what this is, this is actually very similar to a Bloom's Monkey City thing that used to happen back in the day, but they're inserting this into BTD6. I'm not sure if they're ever going to make a Bloom's Monkey City 2, but it does not seem like it's on their radar. Right now, they're focusing on BTD6 and focusing on Battles 2, and that's what they're doing. So, this is a cool-looking event where you work uh, with a team or a group of people that are your teammates or your team. Uh, and you kind of work together and fight against other groups of people. It looks like there's going to be six total groups of people that are all fighting over territory to try to reach up to the middle and get cool stuff and earn treasure and all that other fun stuff. This looks like a really cool thing to do. It also is not just who plays the most because it looks like you get some sort of tickets to use to play the game, so you can only do it like once a day or something like that, so it keeps you coming back every single day instead of just forcing yourself to play 20 hours of balloons in a day or something like that, which is just absurd. So that is the first thing that I want to show you guys really quickly. I'm not going to talk too much about um, the rest of this. This is not a full secret or anything like that, but NinjaQB has given us a few more details about it, but I don't want to talk about that today. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about, though, is the teams. So teams slash guilds are coming to B36. Join up with your friends and other great players to show off your skills in the upcoming Contested Territory event. That's really, really, really cool. Um, so the next bullet point, mayors form teams of up to 15 players. So it's a tight-knit group. It's not just a mega 50 people or 100 people in a group or something like that. 15 people seems like it's very private. Um, a nice group of people you can actually play together and everything, which is really, really fun. Uh, you can set a private, public, you can manage your team and all that stuff, which is really cool. You get contested territory uh, tickets. And they'll pool unused daily individual tickets, both from open team slots and from team members who couldn't play that day. And then the contested territory pool tickets will be capped per person per day. While allowing for solo play, we don't want solo teams to dominate individual boards. So it makes it so you aren't limited if you don't have the full 15 players. You can still end up getting 10 players and still do just as good as a team with 15 players. Very cool design, guys. Love it. Um... And obviously, it's cool that you could just kind of like split up and, and, and play and have fun with your friends without being forced to play every single day or something like that. Just allowing yourself to play if you want to. Um, really cool system. I'm really excited for it, and we're going to see how it goes. So again, don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay tuned for all that cool stuff. All right, now we got to talk about Geraldo. So Geraldo, again, one of the comp most complicated heroes in the game. The first thing I want to show you guys is the fact that he works in a mysterious way. Every time you level him up from level 3 up, He's going to start gaining more and more items in his item shop. Each one of these items is obviously going to cost some money, so uh, they are not free, but almost all of them are worth it. Alright, not every single one, but in most situations, almost all of them are worth it to use, as long as you're using them properly. And that's what I'm going to show you guys today, is how to use them properly. So every level we go up, we get a new item in the, in the uh, uh, system here until I think level 12. Level 12, once you get to level 12, then they're not just giving you new items, they're going to start upgrading the previous items. So you notice our turret upgraded, our nails got upgraded, our camo potion got upgraded, our uh, sharpening stone and our maelstrom got upgraded, the, the nails and the Jerry's fire got upgraded, uh, and our genie just got upgraded. Don't know what I covered it there, and then level 20, very important here. All right, this is if you're trying to solo or do very good for a late game Geraldo, you get everything unlocked again up to max when you're really level 20. So make sure you're paying attention and you are actually uh, unlocking these things properly and using them to your best ability. So you can get it back in level 20 if you need to. 
And then, of course, we get this uh, really cool Paragon Power Totem, which is only useful if you're going super duper late game by yourself in a solo player game. But other than that, yeah. So I guess the first thing to talk about is actually uh, Geraldo's base attack. So I'm going to try to go into some detail for you guys about his base attack here. Uh, this is not super duper important. Most people don't care about this, but I wanted to talk about it anyways because we're doing a deep dive. All right. So first of all, you're going to notice if we send the seven reds against this guy, he does pop them all. So if we send out eight reds against this guy, he does not pop them all, which means his pierce is seven. He could do seven blue damage all at the same time. Um, you're also going to notice if we send out blues against him, he is going to pop them down to reds and then down to nothing. He's not just going to pop them down to nothing, so it means his damage is only one. Um, if you guys don't know what piercing damage does, it's okay. Damage basically means how many balloons you're going through. Pierce means it's kind of... Damage is like a sniper going through multiple layers. And Pierce is like a... Uh, uh, like a catapult going through multiple balloons. Sending out <laughs> and chopping through 40 balloons. That's the basic way I could explain it. So uh, then once you reach level 7 here... You notice Geraldo is... Oop, level 7. He's going to get more uh, 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 damage and pierce. So now we have to figure out how much pierce and damage we're getting here. So we're going to set out uh, 12 reds. We pop them all. We're going to set out 13 reds. We did not pop them all. So that means we have got 12 pierce this time around. But as far as damage is concerned, we can do uh, uh, blues down to nothing. But not greens down to nothing. Which means we're doubling our damage to 2 damage. Which is really, really cool. Now moving up, the next big change you're going to get is at level 19. Uh, Droll's main attack is faster, has a longer range, and does more damage. Pretty cool. Alright. So now, when we send out 27 red balloons here, you're going to see we pop them all. When we send out 28 reds, you're going to see that we do not pop them all, which means his pierce is 27 this time around. As far as damage is concerned, though, it's important to note that we can pop um, 27 green balloons down to nothing, and 27 yellow balloons down to nothing, but 27 pinks we cannot do. So we, only, we do 4 damage now with 27 pierce. So obviously a lot of popping power for level 20. Geraldo, do not underestimate him. It should be noted that with all of his attacks here, he does have a lot of weaknesses. Believe it or not, he's got no camo popping power whatsoever in his regular attacks. He's got no uh, lead popping power in his regular attacks. And he's got no purple popping power in his regular attacks. That means he's got a pretty significant amount of weaknesses. He can still hit Ceramis, he can still hit Mobs, he can still hit BFBs, he can still hit a lot of these other balloons and do damage to them. He's not ridiculously strong or anything like that. Uh, that is not his main purpose. He has a regular attack, but that's not his main goal here. His main goal is to use the items in the shop to pop things. So, let's talk about the items in the shop. Um, I might do them a little bit out of order. Now nah, let's just do them in order, guys. Uh, let's talk about the shooty turret. Shooty turrets are by far Trollo's best aspect. His best asset, man. I mean, I wish we could turn him around and show off another asset he's got. Uh, you know, spin him around. It's just, oh yeah, check out that big, beautiful, bouncilacious backpack. But we shouldn't do that right now. Instead, let's talk about the shooty turrets. So, believe it or not, they've got a very interesting amount of uh, piercing damage that they do. I send out 10 reds here. Keep in mind, these are 10 reds. This is the. You know, I mean, if I send it out with with one spacing, this is what it would look like. But I'm sending it with zero spacing instead, just because it's easier to see how many pops we actually get. Uh, but if we send out 11 reds, we again cannot pop them all, which means we have 10 pierce for a shooty turret in a single shot. That's really, really, really good for a random thing that you could build many of. They've got absurd amounts of per a pierce. It's almost insane how much pierce they have. So uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the combinations a little bit later on, but to know that these guys and these guys are beautiful and you can even masterfully use these potions in almost a mysterious way that makes almost no freaking sense how good they are. Uh, but as far as damage goes, um, nothing insane, guys. You know, we're uh, we're shooting down to uh, 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 blues. Blues down to nothing, which is actually not bad for just a regular shooting turret. Two damage. Heck yeah, dude. But you're going to see why I say this is not great, but not bad. Once you see the next level, whew, it gets spicy. So, keep in mind that all these will get a second level. We're going to go over those once we get there, because those will be kind of late game stuff. I don't want to talk about them now. Alright, these spikes. Ten red balloons, down to nothing. Nothing left over means we do ten damage, or ten popping power with these guys. The totem, I don't think we need to go into a deep detail about what this guy does exactly, or how many balloons he sends back. Just know that he sends back some balloons here and there. Uh, 
There's no real uh, uh, major limit to what he can do. But at this point in the game, he cannot send back or stall Moabs. But later on, he will be able to. Uh, the Strength Potion. So I wanted to go into a little bit of detail about the Strength Potion. Because it's really easy to understand what they do with a Dart Monkey. Because Dart Monkeys, if you guys know any better, have... Uh, the ability to, to go through three red balloons, and they do not have any damage whatsoever, just regular one damage. So we pop blue down to red, or pink, yellow, green, blue, red. Um, but if we give them the Strength Potion, which is supposed to allow you to hit harder, but shoot slower, what does that mean, hit harder? All right, well, if we send out four reds this time around, you're going to notice that we're going to pop them. Not all. No, no, no. So we don't do any pierce. We do damage? Would you look at that? We do damage now. So this is going to work really, really well on somebody who shoots pretty quickly, but you want to uh, increase the amount of total damage output that they do, basically. Knocking big balloons down to smaller balloons as quick, efficiently as possible. But don't forget that they shoot slower. So even though you are getting one benefit, you don't want to give it up. You can an you can actually make this guy worse in some situations. Um... One of the ways that he might work worse is on like a big high level sniper, like a deadly precision sniper. Popping a ceramic down to nothing is very nice to have this guy do that. But if we gave him a strength potion, he's not knocking a ceramic down into nothing negative. It's just making him shoot slower. So you got to make sure you're using your strength potions in an effective way um, that actually makes sense for you. Quincy action figure. Let's actually exit out and show you guys how this guy works. All right, so we're playing it hard right now. We've got $850. We do have our cheaper-esque... Uh, Geraldo here at $585, not very expensive. You can actually start off with him if you wish. Question is, how should you use Quincy's action figure? Well, if you use him right from the get-go, uh, yeah, I guess we'll throw that. If you use him right from the get-go and you look in the shop here, uh, it starts off at $810 as soon as you build him, but every round you go up, the price is going to go up. So instead of just waiting until round like 9 or 10 when you can finally afford this guy, the price keeps going up more than the money we're making. You want to do something different. So let me show you what you want to do. You want to go for your free tower. If you have a free dart monkey, if you have a free glue gunner, probably won't help us out much, but use your free tower. And this is the, the best way to use him, the most efficient way to use him, if at all possible. Wait till round six. If you want to make sure that you have a little extra damage and don't lose uh, that many lives, wait until round seven if you want to be the most efficient with your money. It's kind of up to you on what you want to do, but build them on that exact round here, and I'll show you guys in just a second why we do that. If we build them on round six, we will not be able to buy uh, the Quincy action figure on this round, but we can get the popping power for this, and we can still afford it by round seven. But it'll be more efficient for our money purposes if we wait till the end of round six here, build them on round seven, and then we've got the money directly for a Quincy action figure, and we can throw this guy in the ground. That's actually really, really cool. Now, the way this guy works is he's basically like a uh, unofficial farm. At the end of every single round, he's going to be worth more money. So he's worth more money, and then when we need the money, we sell it. We could even sell this guy in a couple rounds here and change him into banana farms or something like that. To be honest, banana farms are more efficient, so this guy is not an automatic awesome-tastic thing or anything like that. You're better off going banana farms if you're willing to spam, but it's an alternative that's kind of fun and interesting to use if you're willing to do it that way. Before we get too deep in here, I just wanted to mention that I this guy is so complicated that it is easy to make mistakes, and if I am making any mistakes, please feel free to correct me in the comments below. I will not feel bad about it or anything like that. Um, just please be reasonable. There is so many things going on with this guy. It is complicated. Uh, it is easy to kind of make mistakes or mess up or something like that. Um, and or miss things, because there are some weird things about him that might still kind of elude me. Uh, one of the cool things about this Strength Potion here is if you do decide to use your Strength Potion on Geraldo himself, it includes all of the towers underneath him or that he owns. So if we just give the Strength Potion to a Crossbow Turret, it just gives it to the Crossbow Turret. Okay, that's kind of stupid, but alright. If we give the Strength Potion to Geraldo, though, we will give the Strength Potion to all of our Shooty Turrets. And that is pretty cool. Same thing with the camo detection. If we use our camo detection here, it will give it to all of the shooting turrets. So usually, in most situations, the best thing for you to do is give your strength potion and your camo detection potion directly to Geraldo. Every eight rounds for the strength potion, and every ten rounds for the camo detection, and Geraldo just becomes almost unbelievably powerful. It's kind of ridiculous. So, let's uh, move on. We're finally moving on to a higher level Geraldo. Yeah! Alright, glue. Now, glue is actually pretty gosh darn powerful. 
If I send out 299 reds here, oh man, that's a long way, isn't it? 299 reds. And you notice that we are actually not going to uh, uh, get rid of our glue, which means that if we add one more red balloon to the mix, we do. So what does he have? 300 glue pairs. All right, easy to understand. That's a lot of balloons, actually. Like, a lot more than you'd probably expect. Back in BTD4, it was like 10 balloons or 20 balloons, something like that. It's just not that crazy. The sharpening zone is, uh, is important to understand. Sharpen those darts, apply this to darts, and blades will be sharper than ever before. So let's go back to our trusty dart monkey, which we showed you his pierce earlier. And this time around, we're going to sharpen him. Keep in mind, sharpening stone lasts forever. So once you get it, just buy it. But make sure you're buying it on the right towers here. I'm going to show you a, a, a trick that you can use with him um, uh, later on. But for right now, just know that... It, it, whew, dude, it's, it's pretty... It's good. It's good. So strength potion does damage. This does pierce, which means we do four pierce with one shot. Now we could do four red balloons instead of the measly three that we could do before. Obviously, this helps much more for something that does not have much pierce, like a super monkey. But there's a trick. What if we go to the next level here, and we decide that, you know what? Maybe what we should do is we should use our sharpening stone on a super monkey. Because he shoots really fast, and now we're doubling his pierce. Oh, baby. Now that's pretty cool. Does he get any benefits? No, he doesn't. It doesn't get any benefits from being owned by Geraldo or anything like that. But he still does have that double damage. 2225 bucks. Oh my god. This is like the cheapest way you can get anything ever. It's only 1300 bucks to get the Super Monkey, uh, Dart Monkeyified with a Sharpening Stone. An extra 175 bucks. He, he, he's, he's boss, dude. He's boss for what he is. And just to show it off, I guess we're going to send out, I don't know, about like 12 ceramics. Check this guy out. This is just a regular old super monkey. Look at this. I mean, look at this damage. Look at this damage. He's not the best tower in the game, but dang. He's freaking good, dude. He is freaking good. He's taking down zebras and everything. All right. Maybe a few few too many ceramics. He didn't look as boss as I thought he was going to look. All right. I'll, I'll admit it. I'll admit it. But let's move on. Next up, we've got this Maelstrom here. Blade Trap. If you guys don't know, Blade Trap basically waits, waits until a balloon walks on top of it. Once a balloon walks on top of it, it activates. If it's a single balloon, it'll activate. If it's five billion balloons, it'll still activate. Um, it does have a limitation to how much pierce it actually has. So if we send out 500 ceramics, and we uh, do this a bunch of times, actually, and we throw down a quick blade maelstrom here, you notice that it does have a limit to the amount of pierce it has. Fair enough. Kind of makes sense. Reasonable, actually. And we move on to Jerry's Fire. Okay, now this is probably one of the most complicated items that Jerry owns, because there's a little thing about him that makes very little sense. I don't understand why this works the way it does, but it is the way it is. If we add two Jerry's Fires onto two Dart Monkeys here, and we send out 500 rainbows, I'm just going to wait like 30 seconds or so, let's wait like 10 seconds or so, and then just uh, delete the blues. Alright, and we are done. All right, now these dart monkeys should be almost the exact same thing with almost the exact same popping power. We should expect these guys to see the exact same numbers or very close to it. And the first number is 4,049. The second number is 1,150. Why would that be the case, Chris? That is a threefold, if not almost a fourfold difference in popping power. Geraldo, what the heck's going on, bro? Well, here, I think there is only one way to solve this. Let's give another Jerry's Fire. Let's delete the pop count so everybody's back at zero, and let's set up 500 more rainbows. What is going on? Now, keep in mind, this is the most recent Dart Monkey, the most recent tower that has gotten Jerry's Fire. So, we'll wait just a quick bit here, and then we're going to say, boom, balloons, gone. We don't care about you. We get 1,466, 1,475, very similar numbers, and our most recent Dart Monkey has almost 6,000. What? It shows me one thing. Jerry's fire only works strongly on your most recent tower. All right? It does not matter which tower you pick, how fast they shoot, or anything like that. It just matters which one did you get it most recently on. So if we get Jerry's fire again, I tested this out extensively because it confused the crap out of me. I always thought, oh, dang. Uh, you know, super monkeys must shoot faster so we can get more Jerry's fire damage or something like that. No, seemingly no. It, that is not the case. Uh, yes, they will get more popping power because, of, obviously, it's a super monkey, but it's negligent overall. But the problem is you can't test them when they're next to each other because Jerry's fire is going to be more powerful on the most recent dark monkey that you used. 
So when we go back and we look at the actual popping power that we got, we only got 1,700 and 4,522. So we actually have to do it separately on every single dart monkey, and every single monkey, and I tested it out with like 12 of them, not all of them, but even banana farms. And this is exactly what I found, guys. Exactly what I found. Every dart monkey, every monkey gives the same amount, but it depends on which one you used last. All right. Uh, this is actually a really easy test for us. We can do a banana farm test. Now we just give one of them fertilizer. We press around, like round uh, 40 here. Ba bam Boom. Send it out. Grab our bananas, and we can look at the money amount. 180. All right, we make 20% more money uh, with a fertilizer. Pretty cool. Love it. Though it depends. You know, I, I hate I hate that I say this, but like, I'm not, I'm not a professional mather or anything like that. But when I look at this, 80 going to 100, to me, is just like 20%. But some people argue that that's 25%. Because you have to actually do the math, a 20% difference, and then from the original, and that's 25% bonus. All right. Uh, fair enough. All right, if that's the way you want to think about it, 25% bonus. I just look at this, it's easy for me to just say 20%. So um, even if it's not correct math, uh, that's the way I look at it, bro. It's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel bad, but it's just the way it is. Moving on. We've got the Pet Rabbit. So I cannot show off the Pet Rabbit in sandbox mode, and believe it or not, I'm not going to show off the Pet Rabbit in this game. But just know that if you buy four Pet Rabbits all around Geraldo, he gets a Super Rabbit, and it jumps around everywhere on the screen, and it can pop all types of balloons, I believe. Uh, and it's just really ridiculously powerful. It's really, really good. Totally worth it. Definitely spend the money on that. All right, lives. Let's talk about this benefit right here. A, reju a Rejuve Potion. Only gave us three lives. What's up with that? Well, it depends on how many lives you have for your Rejuve Potion. So we're going to level ourselves up. Uh, and talk about the uh, genie bottles, and we're going to go back to the Rejuve Potion later on, because I think it's important. All right, the genie. Summon a genie from this brilliant blue bottle, but beware it won't last forever. No wishes included with the purchase. So, all right, I believe they last three rounds, um, and they do have a weakness of purple popping power, so you want to make sure that you're not sending out purple balloons against these guys, or you've got some alternative form of purple popping power. Um... They do have camera detection, though, so they're kind of like a wizard strategy, a wizard play. You can hit uh, DDTs and all that other fun stuff with these guys if you desire. Sadly, we can't pop 500 DDTs, but just know that they, they, they do have some weaknesses. They're not all powerful or anything like that. Moving on, we've got to talk about the next level of shooty turrets. So the next level shooty turrets is going to be a more powerful version of the previous shooty turret. So we're going to set out 10 reds again. And you notice Kablamo, we pop 10 reds, no problem. All right, let's try 11. Try 11 reds. And you're going to notice, oh, there was a red left over, which means we still only have 10 pierce. But now we've got something more impressive, Chris. Let's change this to zero uh, uh, that. We send out green balloons. Oh, wait, one, 10. Ba bam. Let's send out yellow balloons. Ba bam, we take down yellow balloons. Pink balloons, Chris, no way. Oh my god. This shooty turret is ridiculous. Oh my god, we could do blacks and whites. What about a zebra balloon? Oh my god. Chicka, chicka. What? What? That's seven damage. Seven damage that he can do. That is the same as a one, two, large caliber sniper here. And he can go through ten balloons at once. This guy is straight up insanity. And that does not include the fact that we still have not strength potioned ourselves. Or sharpening stoned him. Which will obviously give him one more damage. And one more pierce. Holy crap. That, that's, that's pretty crazy. That means we can ten, 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 ten rainbows, Chris? Ten, ten, ra ten rainbows. Gone, just like that. Ceramics? Are you kidding me? This is 10 ceramics. Poof! Poof! Disappeared! Oh my god, that's beautiful. That's just straight up beautiful. Almost too, too beautiful. I got I got to admit. Alright. Um, I don't even really care about the nails. Who uses nails mid-game? It's kind of garbagey. Alright, let's talk about the uh, Sea Invisibility Potion. Whatever monkey gift... Uh, uh, whatever monkey you gift with this extremely... Efficacious elixir. Be able to see camel balloons with ease. Effects will wear off. Now gives increased range and lasts even longer. Beautiful. So let's check out the range difference here. All right, let's go with this guy. And then it's very hard to tell, but look at the range. It's going to go one monkey width away from this. All right, that's the way we're going to do it. Now it's going to go instead of one monkey width, we're going all the way to here. Woo! It's a pretty big change, man. If you do super monkeys and things, it's going to be a percentage change, so it'll be even bigger, even larger. Like if we get one of these puppies, and then we go, but, 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 oh, 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 Geraldo, Geraldo, give me your camo deliciousness, my friend. Give me your camo deliciousness. Check out this range. All right, uh, you know, a little bit away from this. Just a little bit. 
We go boom camo. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's huge. It's huge. I gotta admit. That could be pretty delicious, to say the least. Okay, we're getting to some spicy levels here. Now keep in mind that this is the point where uh We've got five levels left, but mostly what we're doing is we're just upgrading previous items. So we do want to still deep dive this and understand what he's doing, but we're going to test this out with the Dart Monkey. We're going to test out this Sharpening Stone. This is the second level of Sharpening Stone. So now when we set out five reds, remember, keep in mind that the first Sharpening Stone did Pierce. All right, not damage. This one did not increase the Pierce anymore. But now Blue Balloons are going to disappear. But blue balloons disappearing, Chris. That means we're doing damage. So the first sharpening stone is going to increase your pierce. The second sharpening stone will increase your damage. Okay. All right. That's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, I actually have never tested out how you upgrade a sharpening stone or whether or not it automatically upgrades the sharpening. But, uh, yeah, that's something for you guys to talk about in the comments. Now, we did talk about this very briefly and talk about how it's very good if you get it with a sharpening stone and or a... Uh, uh, strength potion here, but we not talk about how it does limit you in your super monkey here. It only allows you to get three three threes. To me, no problem whatsoever. Buy a bunch of dart monkeys, upgrade them up to just zero zero base, uh, and get all this other stuff. One of the things to keep in mind is that you can super monkey if I two two dart monkeys, but it does nothing. It just wasted money. All right, so don't try to upgrade these guys with one of these super monkeys. It does not give them cam detection. Does not give them extra pierce. I tested it out. It's still the same thing. See, again, wonky. Things that you might not expect to have happen. All right, we're going to set out five bajillion ceramics to see how much stronger this uh, uh, next Moab Mauler is. Oh, dang, that's a lot. That's a lot, a lot. All right, all right. Let's see what we can do here. <laughs> I put it, I never put it on top like that, but dang. That's 500 ceramics each each pile there. But you can see we can get overwhelmed, but it lasts so much longer. It's nice. You know, she loves that. She loves how long we can last here, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. And we can still blow them up. Delicious. All right, we got we to gotta clean these guys up before we lag out. Um, yes. That's the Maelstrom. Once we get here, Jerry's Fire is going to get stronger. So I'm not even going to go into details about this. Just know that it's like it's like double, if not a little, long, little better than that. Um, as we get up to the next level, level 17 here. Uh, Gerardo's main attack does more damage, and a Mazo Glue now has a small effect on Moab Plus. Oh, I forgot about Gerardo's main attack at level 17. Okay, yeah, that's probably why we went from 2 to 3 at level 17, and 3 to 4 at, eight, at 19. Dang! Chris, get on top of it! Alright, so now we can affect uh, Moabs with our glue, but it does not work the same way as before. So now when we do a glue, it's still going to be 300 balloons worth. So if we set out 300, 299 reds, eventually it's going to... Uh, eventually, it'll wear off. One red. Yeah. 300. But now we can affect Moabs. All right, but it's not 300 Moabs, sadly. So if I'm not mistaken, we can do 30 Moabs with a glue. All right, there's 29 Moabs. We'll send out one more. 30 Moabs. I'm not even going to show it off, but it's 15 BFBs. Uh, five, I don't know how many Zoma Gods, but five to ten. I think it was like seven Zoma Gods and 15 DDTs. All right, so that's a pretty reasonable amount for the glue, but it's not 300. So just, just keep that in mind. It does not last forever. It's not all powerful or something like that. All right, we get those, the Mega Genies. Holy crap, these guys are freaking powerful. Remember when I accidentally sent it like 30 DDTs last time? All right, how about 20 DDTs? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. What? What? 20, 20 DDTs for a Mega Gold Genie? Oh, yeah. Delicious, man. The power is absurd. I don't even know what to say about him. Just know that he's absurd. All right. I think that we got um, made attack faster, longer range, does more damage, and invisibility potion gains bonus damage to Camo Blooms. Pretty cool. All right. Bonus damage to Camo Blooms. I'll take it. That means we're better at CDTs if we're using this guy and or any other weird camos that might be coming out late game. Usually DDTs. Cough, cough. And then last but not least, level 20. So I'm not going to spend the four hours showing off the Paragon Totem action here, but do know that the Paragon Totems, the way that these guys are going to work, is I'm sure you guys know by now that uh, to get a Paragon Monkey, you need to have three fifth-tier towers and have the Paragon unlocked. So uh, for an Apex Plasma Master, we have to get all three of these guys 
and then we can buy this guy. But to actually level him up even higher, we need to make sure we have 16 million pops, and we have to make sure we have 600 or 250,000 worth of fourth tier or less dart monkeys on the screen. So usually you want to build like 40 super dart monkeys or whatnot, all the way up to Super Monkey Fan Club, all of the screen. And then you also want to make sure you're buying any additional types of things that you can. So dart monkeys are kind of cool because you can get two crossbow masters. And then when you buy this guy, you're still only going to get a Paragon Monkey of level 76. You need to get all four people in co-op to get fifth tier Dart Monkeys, and they turn into a single Paragon if you want a Paragon level 100. Unless you're using Geraldo's Paragon Power Totems. You need about 50 Totems. Uh, I think it might be like 46 or 45 with this uh, second crossbow Dart Monkey if you want to do solo. But this is the only way to solo get a Paragon level 100 with the Paragon Power Totems. So, that's pretty much it for Geraldo. Um, he's got a lot of interesting things going on with him. He's very cool. He's a very fun hero. He's got a lot of complicatedness to him. I Hopefully I helped you guys out in understanding his Pierce and Damage conundrum, because it's just kind of absurd how good these shooty turrets are. Make sure you're upgrading and beefing up your shooty turrets whenever possible. They're delicious. Don't use the nail mines too much. Oh, I forgot about the Creepy Idol. Creepy Idol, Chris. At a high level, Creepy Idol actually does stuff to Moab class blues. So, uh, against Moabs, we can... Oh, crap. Are we going to pop it? Okay, well, okay yeah. Let's get let's get going on this. Let's, let's do this. 29 Moabs. Creepy Idol can actually stun some Moabs here and there. Hmm, that's pretty cool. It can even affect BFPs, but it does not affect Zone My Gods. In case you're curious... Didn't test it against DDTs, but uh, you guys can have some fun with that and check it out if you feel like doing it. But the Creepy Idol is not as horrible as you might imagine once you realize that you can stall or stun Moab Class Blooms for a measly $85 later on in the game. It's just a little bit of extra popping power, but it can matter a lot for $85. Uh, the main thing that I wanted to go over really quickly is just the best way to use Geraldo, in my opinion, is to make sure you're using the shooty turrets properly. Use as many shooty turrets as you can. Make sure you're powering the, all the shooty turrets up with the strength potion, and make sure you're using the sharpening stone either on these or waiting until you can get your super monkeys up and sharpening them, because they'll be better off getting sharpened than these guys. Because these guys getting the damage is really, really important, uh, but getting an extra pierce from 10 to 11, eh, it doesn't really matter too much. Once you get the higher level sharpening stone, heck yeah, dude. Now we're getting extra damage and pierce on top of our already extra uh, damage leads to some pretty awesome stuff in here um, for shooty turrets later on in the game. Um, but it's very easy to get some very low-level super monkeys uh, kind of spam going by doing this, this, and sharpening them, and getting an absurd amount of popping power. It's almost crazy how much popping power you can get. Even if we send out, I don't know, um, 55. With this small... Holy crap. Holy crap. Can we beat 63 with this? I don't know if we have any lead popping power. Uh, we do not have any lead popping power. All right, let's get a let's get a random cluster cannon here. Let's pop the leads. Okay, we cannot pop 63 at least by ourselves here, with all the leads in the way. <laughs> but dang, that's still pretty beef tastic. All right, 55 have kind of impressed me. 63, a little little less impressive, but still not bad for how much money we spent on this crap. This is like five thousand dollars worth of stuff. It's like absurd. One thousand eighty four. 1,084, this was like $200 plus some sharpenings. Oh my god, it's absurd. And we didn't even add a Jerry's Fire in the mix, which would help us. Because all you need is one Jerry's Fire, keep the one Jerry's Fire active at all times. Getting two and three Jerry's Fire probably won't help you out that much. You know, it could, it could do something, but it's not going to be the absurd, ridiculous value that you might imagine. Alright, I might have missed some things here and there, but I think overall this is a pretty good understanding of how Geraldo works. Uh, make sure you're using them. Um, oh, I never mentioned... Rejuve Potion. Last thing about the Rejuve Potion is once you get uh, you get 50 lives per Rejuve Potion. Once you get to uh, uh, 1,000 lives, they'll only give you uh, like 3 or 4 lives per thing of above. And then once you get to 99,000, 999,999, it will stop giving lives. So 1 million is the max life that you can get with Geraldo in case you're curious. In case you wanted to know, guys. All right. But again, if you guys enjoyed, press that like button for me. Make sure you subscribe. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.